Hello everyone, this is Alex Bevolsic from HowToDoTech.com and today we're going to be talking about keyframes in iMovie. So keyframes has been in Final Cut Pro for multiple generations of Final Cut Pro, but it just recently came to the new version of iMovie. Now using them is actually really simple. I think it's actually a little easier on Final Cut Pro because it's a lot easier visually to understand them, but we will be going right into iMovie to talk about these keyframes. So I already have a event keyframe tutorial right here with these two objects, and I'm just going to create a movie right now. Just call this test for the movie. Now from here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to drag in the flame. This is going to be the main video. Now what keyframes are really going to be helpful for are picture in picture objects. So real quick, I just want to extend the length of this so I am going to change the timing. We'll put it down to 50% and then we'll just change the timeline so it's all in one area. Really simple. Now I'm going to drag in the mouse, just put it right here, extend it over most of the length just so we have the most amount of time to talk about keyframes. Now I'm going to tap on that, hit adjust, and go to picture in picture. So now that we have a picture in picture, I'm going to redo the cropping on that real quick just so we can get the full mouse picture in there. So we have the mouse and I'm going to go right to the beginning of the clip and put that mouse in the top left corner. So we're going, we're going, and say at this point I want the mouse to start moving. You're going to see your keyframe controls right over here. The center is the adding keyframe button or subtracting, and these will let you jump around to different keyframes because you do have to be exact with these timings. Now the reason my Final Cut Pro is a little bit easier is because you have the option of setting up a timeline that shows you where each keyframe is happening. Sadly, iMovie does not allow that, but a way to jump around to different keyframes is using these arrows. You'll see what I mean in a sec. So I'm going to hit my first keyframe right here. Now say I want the mouse to stay in this spot until I get to this point in the video. Now I'm going to add a second keyframe. And now I'm going to go to the spot where I want the mouse to end. So say right here I want it to be at the other corner. Now I'm going to move the mouse down to the other corner. Now since we've already added one keyframe, from now on whenever we move the mouse it's going to automatically assume we want to add a new keyframe. So I've moved the mouse there. Now I'm going to jump around to about this point. I'm going to move the mouse up to the top corner. And then I'm going to go up to this point move the mouse down towards the center and then we'll go right to the almost at the end and we'll put the mouse at the bottom left corner so what we have right now is a moving mouse if I hit play you can look the mouse starts at the top it stays there until we get to the keyframe where it moves and then it moves around as we want it to do so now you can also do this with videos this is great if you have things that you want to move out of the way during certain shots now this is pretty quick this is all happening in a couple seconds so the mouse is really moving but a slow moving keyframe that happens over a longer period of time can look really professional and it's very helpful so we've done that but say I was editing this in the future I want to change a keyframe maybe I didn't like where it ended up and I want to change it all you have to do is go to these arrows until you find the spot where that keyframe is you want to change. So maybe I don't want it to go all the way to the top corner. So now that I've hit this back arrow until I got to this keyframe, I'm not going to touch the timeline whatsoever. I'm just going to move the mouse to the new spot that I want it, maybe right there. So now when we look, if I just start at this point, it's going down, and instead of going all the way up to the top, it stops where I had it stop for the edited keyframe. Now say I want to get rid of that keyframe altogether. I want it to go straight to the center right after I have it in the bottom right corner. So I'll just hit the keyframe X button right here and from here it will never go back to that spot. So if I play it back from this point it moves down there and then it slowly moves back towards the center. And then after it goes to the center it goes back to where the other keyframe was um, created. So again, keyframes are pretty easy to use. They look really nice and I like to use them a lot. 
So we hope you have enjoyed this tutorial from HowToDoTech.com. If you have any questions, please leave them down in a comment below, or you can email us at HowToDoTechYT at gmail.com. We are also on Facebook and Google+, so if you have any questions, you can always ask us there. And feel free to circle us or like the page. You can also click on our YouTube channel to look at more content we have created, or click on one of the icons right now on the screen to go to those playlists to see more tutorials. Don't forget to like this video and subscribe to the channel. I am Alex Bavulsic, and I will see you next time.